Here we are in the middle of the political season and no spitting image to remind us of what's really on our minds. Spitting image, the acid British television satire we first looked at last spring is no longer on the air. After more than a decade of harpooning just about every public figure in the world, the show was put to rest. Partly because of ratings, partly because the behavior of so many public figures was so outrageous, they became impossible to satire. No one will be more pleased with the death of spitting image than the British royal family, particularly Her Majesty the Queen. Spitting Image um, really went for the Royals right from the first show. And then over the years, somehow we were left behind by the Royals. In fact, I think we're the best press they get. I mean... Roger Law, one of the founders of Spitting Image, started life as a caricaturist for newspapers, then stretched that talent using latex life-size puppets. The show foundered at first but along came the royal family's shenanigans to save the day. Well, you know, we make you one. The Queen was, uh, was, a, was a favorite puppet because it actually has more than one expression. We're, we're, the puppets usually don't do an awful lot. And I was delighted with the Queen because you could make her look angry and you could make her laugh. Uh, the puppet, that is. Billy, look, I found this the other day. You? See, I put this card in. Yes. I press these buttons yes. like so. Yes, and it would make the noise. There well. Yeah. And look, you... my picture comes out. But, but where was the flash? What will they think of next? You portray them, the, the royal family, as <clears throat> uh, humorless, mean-spirited, money-grubbing, uh, rather empty shells of people. Do you think that's the way they really are? If you'd have asked me this when we first started, I wouldn't have been sure, but I think that the way that um, they have handled the media, I mean, they're, they're satirizing themselves in every tabloid before you can get the show out. After all these years, King, at last, the Queen is dead. Long live the King! <laughs> I always fall for that one. We used to tease him mercilessly, poor man. And that may be why he sought solace in the arms of another. I don't know. <laughs> John Lloyd, a producer, was part of the spitting image team from day one. Of all the people who take a beating on that broadcast, it is the royal family year in and year out. Well... I always used to say that the joke about the royal family as we portrayed them originally was that if they'd been called the Smiths, there wouldn't really have been any jokes because, you know, the, the dad, Philip's a bit irascible and, uh, you know, the Queen was always terribly nice and kind and thoughtful. And, yeah, you know, Sister Margaret drinks a bit too much and um, Prince Charles is a bit mad. He was rather interested in talking daffodils and things like that. I mean, it's important, isn't it? Yes. There is no family quite as dysfunctional as a royal one. Is a carbuncle. The estranged, or just plain strange wife of Prince Andrew. Let's have a big hand for Fergie. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And are we going to have the two little ones in it? Oh, yeah, why not? Oh, my God! <laughs> I couldn't call them little ones. Really, Spitting Image is like the cartoon in your daily newspaper, but brought to life, you know. Um, and, and as you know from cartoons, all the best ones have a, an, an, an element of meanness about them. Excuse me, let's be true, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, I'm retired. In British politics, many of the key players may not be known to you. This one, of course, is... The left must be annihilated. Margaret Thatcher in her full fire-breathing fury, only slightly exaggerated. Oh, my God! 
Oh, what's that ticking noise? It, it's my pacemaker. Will you turn it off so I can get some sleep? <gasps> oh, that's better. Two, one. Britain's Conservative government practically wrote the scripts for Spitting Image, a series of scandals to rival the royal families, featuring philandering, feckless members of the cabinet. What a genuine, honest, good bloke. And the most offensive things to politicians were always that we said their noses were big, or well, they had funny-shaped ears, and they, it drives them crazy, that kind of stuff. You can say, you know, you're a corrupt person who's cheated on their income tax. They say, fine, you have a very funny, amusing idea. But, you know, say, you know, one of your eyes looks slightly the wrong way, and it's, you bastard, you know. See? I got it wrong. Then there is current Prime Minister John Major, forever doomed to grey. Grey everything. Grey suit, grey tie, grey shirt, grey gray face, yeah. hair. <laughs> Everything's grey. And uh, the only thing he hasn't got grey is his glasses. <laughs> but um, everything else is grey. Um, he had a dream once, and it was a nightmare because everything was in colour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you. Oh, <clears throat> you give me some hope. <clears throat> What's the matter, honey? The American cousins come off no better. President Clinton, here comforting Chelsea through adolescence, receives brutal treatment, beginning with his student days at Oxford. In 25 years' time, yeah. 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 we'll all be living on the moon. Yeah, you know? and we'll all be miniaturized. Mm. And like, instead of food, we'll, we'll eat pills. Yeah, and we'll be able to fly. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be president of the United States. Bill? Yeah. You sure you haven't been inhaling? <laughs> no way! <laughs> well, people always accuse the program of being cheap. I mean, and that was the politician's way of... They didn't dare say it wasn't funny, because that would have meant they had no sense of humor. So they said, oh, it's so easy. They said, well, it's so easy, isn't it, to make jokes about the President of the United States? And I, I said, well, I'm not sure it is. I mean, it's actually quite difficult to do it well. Uh, Mr. Clinton, there's a lady here to see you. Um, hold on. I ain't properly dressed yet. Okay, send her in. Other presidents, other vices. The president is very, very... Uh, Don't say he's drunk. Well, the president is very well. There is no problem here. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> the Spitting Image Workshop is a satirical warehouse of the social history of the last decade or so. Politics, religion, entertainment. Hey, you understand, Bogey. I mean, you do the same thing, right? Mm. Like, who cares what the rest of the world thinks? Woody. Bogey? All the daughters in all the world, you had to sleep with your own. She's my wife's stepdaughter. Twice removed. I hardly know her. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Here's looking at your kid. I'm so depressed. You're depressed. More than a few of the people in this place have appeared on 60 Minutes. We did Kirk Douglas a few years ago. And we did uh, Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau, never looking better. We've managed to survive without O.J. as we have without Michael Jackson and Madonna. Like the view, boys? <laughs> uh, Saddam Hussein made some guest appearances during Desert Storm. Uh, quite close to President Bush at that time. We have not been graced by His Holiness the Pope. Uh, we have by uh, former President Reagan and at least twice by Pavarotti. Get up! Get up! Get up! Stay on the scene! Get up! Like a sex machine! Get up! Get up! Um, Mike's good friend, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, he's been on. And we did Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, when he merely pumped iron for a living. I'm the gorgeous guy in Hollywood. The one Poor Arnold. In this little number, he complains he's big everywhere, but where it counts. I am physical perfection, but this one thing makes me cry. 
George S. Kaufman, the American playwright, a man of acid wit himself, once described satire as what closes on Saturday night. Spitting Image has survived a dozen years of Saturday nights until this year. One reason for its success may be there are no actors, no agents, no egos. Also, no person, no movement, no faith, no cause is sacred. For example, the Sinn Féin leader, Jerry Adams, directing the IRA towards peace. The time for fighting is over. The time for peace has begun. We want a secure, prosperous future for all the people of this island, a safe future. We want Ireland to be a happy, smiling land of goodness and niceness. Oh, you're a good man, Jerry. A true statesman. Yeah, oh, let's that's... follow Jerry and give him our bombs and guns. Let us, uh, hang on, there, there's no need to be hasty. Did you, in all the years of the broadcast, ever run into someone who you regarded as untouchable? We just can't deal with this one. No. It's implausible. That I'm singing this again, it's just implausible. The tweaking of our cultural icons is the show's stock in trade. 2,000 tanks, 500 fixed-wing aircraft, and 20 divisions of Marines. If Andy Warhol was right and everyone gets 15 minutes of fame, in this world, everyone gets his or her 15 minutes of shame. As for immortality, latex may not last as long as marble, but long enough to amaze your friends and amuse your family. As for your enemies, who gives a damn? For me, I'm honored to have been among such honorable and notorious company. And what's more, now that spitting image is dead, I am a genuinely limited edition. And I'll never get grayer than this. Okay? <clears throat>